welcome back to Dental Vibes. I'm Gabby. And I'm Carla. And you guys really loved our composite setup video and we've been getting a lot of DMs for us to do more procedure setup videos. So here we are. We're going to be doing an extraction setup today. Yep. And you know, as always, this is a disclaimer. It's going to change a little bit depending on what the doctor likes to use. Uh, you know, what type of extraction are you doing? Mm -hmm. And we'll dabble a little bit into surgical, but very basic. Again, we're just going to talk about the staple setup for every extraction. For an extraction, sections that you're going to grab is going to be the surgical suction. You're always going to need a saliva ejector and I always grab an HVE just because if it is a surgical extraction and a doctor is going to use a handpiece to section the tooth, you're going to want to use this because it's going to be messy. Once the patient is numb, the first instrument the doctor will probably use will be the periosteal. Um, will be used to see if the patient is numb and then also to start breaking the ligaments. The next instrument will probably be um, some elevators. We have here a small and a large elevator. We always pack them together because usually they are used together. And sometimes the doctor will also like to use the luxators. They are very similar to the elevators, but they are a little bit more curved. So I usually like to always have both of them and see which one the doctor wants to use. All right, the next step would be to actually remove, remove the tooth and we will need a forcep for that. We have four different kinds here, but they're very easy to remember. The first one is the 150. And by the way, these will be labeled at the bottom. You'll see the number. And this is strictly for upper <laughs> posterior teeth, okay? You're not using the lower. For the lower posterior teeth, you have the 151. And you can see, if you can't really see the number, the handle will curve to the palm of your hand. So it's like you see what it's grabbing, lower teeth only. Next, we have the cow horn. And you see, it's got like horns. <laughs> That's what it looks like. That's to grab, uh, again, a lower posterior tooth, a big molar. And then lastly, we have here the straight forcep. This is to remove upper anterior teeth. And you see how it's different from the other ones. And you know, we also have, which we don't have here, but um, if it's to remove like a root tip with a forcep, there's a skinny one. We don't have it, but most doctors like to improvise using the room drawer because it's got very thin tips so they can just grab it. Now, a little disclaimer, if the tooth is very loose, they may not need a forcep. They could probably just um, elevate it when they're using one of the elevators and you'll come out easily but you know you want to have depending on the tooth that you're extracting you want to have one of these out as we mentioned we're gonna be walking you guys through as we're actually doing an extraction so doctor try to use the forcep the tooth is not budging usually we will try to section the tooth with the surgical high speed and use a surgical burr to section the tooth. So remember when I said, sometimes you do need the HVE and this is when, whenever the doctor gets the high speed out, it's very messy, so you wanna suction with the HVE. After that, usually the doctor is gonna be working with the root tips, trying to get it out. Sometimes they'll use elevators, sometimes they'll use their root tip picks, which um, they will have two different sizes and, and sides. And then sometimes they'll even get adventurous and use the east and west elevator. And you can see one is east and one is west. All right, so let's say the tooth is out, but there's still some stuff that need to come out. For example, like we need to clear out the infection or excess tissue, and for that we would use a Q-Red. And it kind of just looks like a big spoon excavator, and there are some that may even have at the very edge of it, it'd be serrated to really uh, scrap off that excess tissue or infection. Or another thing that could happen would be that there's some sharp bony pieces there that we need to remodel and smooth out with the, either the rongeur to trim it out or the bone file to smooth it out. And this is very important. You don't wanna leave um, sharp edges because then the, the site won't heal well. So that's why we do that. And if it, that's all there is, then we would just irrigate with some saline. 
Okay, let's say we are not done here and this patient is looking to get an implant in the future. That means we have to do what's called a socket preservation and that is pretty much once the tooth is out and the socket is clean, we have to put some bone graft material into the socket so everything can heal nicely for the implant placement. So it's very important for you to discuss with your doctor what materials and what kind of bone and what kind of steps that they do for their socket preservation because every doctor is going to be different so this is super simple um, and you can have a good idea of what it's all about um, usually you're gonna need a blend of bone and then you're gonna mix that up with clindamycin into the well um, your doctor will probably tell you how much bone to mix and that depends on you know each tooth depending on the size of the tooth then you're gonna get your condenser um, and you're gonna hand it to the doctor the doctor is gonna pack the bone into the socket with this condenser okay after it is packed like i said we're going to be using a collagen to hold everything in place and then we're ready to place the sutures again every doctor is going to be using different type of sutures um we have here monotech and then we have the surgical hemostat and then scissors and that's what you're going to be using for the suture placement Okay, so our extraction is done. Now it's your turn to go over the post-op instructions with the patient and give them um, some sterile gauze to take home. So you really wanna make sure that you know the post-op instructions. Um, every office should have a post-op instruction sheet. So you make sure you read it. And if the patient has any questions, you will be able to answer it. Because a lot of times the doctor will literally just walk out of the room and you have to dismiss the patient yourself. And remember guys, your bloody stuff in your teeth, you put it in a biohazard bag. We hope this video was helpful. As we mentioned before, we yeah. went through a lot of instruments. <laughs> You're not going to need that for most extractions. We promise, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so make sure you have an open communication with your doctor and your fellow dental assistants. So that way you can find out what your doctor prefers to use and what type of extraction. And that's gonna make your life so much easier. And don't forget to leave us a comment. Hey, which um, procedure setup would you like us to film next? And of course, don't forget to like this video. Thank you so much for the support. And if you haven't done so yet, don't subscribe. forget to subscribe to our channel. And we will see you next time. Keep, Keep smiling. smiling.